Good afternoon. So glad to see all of you uh, here today. I know that some of you uh, aren't able to watch this live, but you do watch it uh, at a later time. So either way, whether you're watching us live or you're watching us uh, later in the day or this evening, uh, so glad to have you as a part of this time as we come just for a few minutes during uh, this week to share uh, in scripture and a time for prayer. I do want to encourage you, if you would like, to share this with others on your timeline there uh, so that they may get a good word today as well. Um, we come, and this week we've had uh, some events happening around our country with a uh, new president, and, uh, and in light of that, uh, knowing that not everybody agrees with one another. We have learned this, right? As uh, that happens in our country, around the world. It even happens in the church. Uh, and in that dislike of others, at times we form uh, a, a intense dislikes. And we even 
start using those terms of friend and enemy, and we may not use that all the time, but we do have that tendency to treat others uh, with disdain or we ignore or we give them enemy-like uh, qualities. And um, we even, and here's a revelation, we even may be the enemy of someone else. And we all like to think, oh no, we get along with everybody. The truth is, in the way we state things, uh, in our conversations, the way we th state things on social media, uh, the way we act towards one another, um, it is, demonstrates our love or lack of love for others. And so Jesus knew that this was an issue of how to treat one another. And uh, in the fifth chapter of Matthew, you'll find the Sermon on the Mount, and this is the summary, if you will, of Jesus' thoughts, beliefs, his sermon. Um, and of course, other scriptures say things about this, but this kind of uh, centralizes things for us. It's found uh, in, in the Gospel of Mark as well. But Matthew uh, gives us this in chapter 5. And it helps us get an understanding. What does it really mean to be a follower of Jesus? And so often I talk about finding common ground and unity. And what is that? And for Christians, it's the ability to agree on these, these uh, Christ-like um, things. It's kind of like his speech to the world and this is what I intend to do with my administration, putting it in political terms, but we know it's more than that. But he says, here's the things I believe. And I'm not going to go all the way through the fifth chapter of Matthew. That could be several times. But one of the things I wanted to highlight for us was uh, the, the last part of that chapter and it's Matthew 5. And once again, if you're looking for a resource for a Bible on your computer or on your phone, an app on your phone, there's Bible uh, Gateway. Uh, you can get it for free or you can pay uh, like $2.99 or something a month. And it gives you access to some commentaries and gets rid of those geeky ads that we have on our apps. Uh, but it gives you a multitude of versions of the Bible. So whether you prefer the New Revised Standard Version or the New International Version or the King James Version or the Message, which is what I'm using today, uh, you can find those things. It's kind of interesting. I look at different things. Uh, so the, the Message is a very modern English. Uh, it's not a, an exact... Uh, transition is not one that's it's <laughs> used readily in uh, the, the schools of theology and such, yet it can speak to us in a way that other versions might, and, it, and it's perfectly fine to use this. So that's what I'm using today. It comes from Matthew 5, and it's verses 43 through 48. And if you do have a Bible app or if you have your Bible in front of you, you can follow along or you just look here on the screen. And this is about our treatment towards enemies in particular and others. So it says, uh, you're familiar with the old written law, love your friend and its unwritten companion, hate your enemy. Now, he quotes, I think it's Leviticus 19, he's quoting, it does not say hate your enemy in there. But that seems to be something that was implied by the statement, loving your enemy. Well, uh, loving your friend, so must hate your enemy. But that's not exactly what that scripture says. Uh, but Jesus is coming along and saying, I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. So here's the flip on the script, if you will. Okay, sure, we're okay loving friends. Sells that in Leviticus. We're cool with that. But he comes along and says, I want you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not 
the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the supple moves of prayer. For then you are working out of your true selves, your God-created selves. This is what God does. So he's saying, now you're going to have a You ever heard somebody give you a hard time? Hello. Um, how do we respond often? We avoid, we attack back, we do all sorts of things. And Jesus comes along and says, I want you to pray for that person. Because that is how God created you, created us to act in those situations. This is what God does. He goes on. God gives us his best. The sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless of the good and bad, the nice and the nasty. So God treats everybody with compassion and provides for everybody, even that person you can't stand. Okay? So that's how God works. So we're called to be more God-like, more Christ-like in our living. This is what Jesus is getting to. Uh, and, and, and so loving, this is, this is the part where as Christians, as Christ followers, we are separated from how others act in this world. If all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. So, um, I think in in a more accurate translation, like NRSV, etc., it would say uh, Gentile, but the message says that. And it, it, what it's saying is, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this can love somebody who loves you back. I mean, that is easy. So the challenge for us as Christ followers comes in this. Now I'm asking, asking you to go a step further and to love the people who you don't want to love. And this is, <laughs> this is probably why I chose the message because it kind of gets me too. Uh, it, humorous but makes a point. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects, your people of God, get with it. Now live like it, it says. Live out of your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. So perhaps, just maybe, all of us could do some growing up when especially it comes to our behavior with others in this world, particularly the people we disagree with, the people we don't like, the people we don't, be, we don't want to be around. It's easy to love those who love you back. But Jesus is saying the challenge for us is quite Christ followers is to love, if you will, the unlovable. And that's the challenge for us in our interactions in the church, in our interactions on social media, our interactions in the grocery store, wherever we are, to love the unlovable. And man, that takes some work. And I'm the first to admit it. That's what we're called to do as Christ followers. If you do have a prayer concern, you can certainly share that with us. I see a few here um, that's on here. Just put those up here for you to see. Uh, this comes from Barbara Seagraves, uh, Connie and Weta's son. Uh, his name is Mark. Um, we have Stony Ford, who puts this up. Prayers for a classmate with ALS. I know that if you have other prayer concerns, 
Uh, you can list those whenever you watch this. And I try to go back and, and, and look at that. Uh, I may miss it, but I do my best to do that. Um, so let's take a moment for prayer uh, as we pray for, and I, I do this for every new administration, so I don't want you to think I'm making political favorites. I try to I, I do this for every president uh, as we pray for our new president. So we pray for a new administration. We hope that they have and look towards the ways of God. We may not always agree. That's okay. Uh, but we want to pray that they use God's guidance and decisions that are made. So we come before God uh, in this time of prayer, starting with a moment of silent prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we step into your presence. It's a presence filled with awe and wonder, with grace and love, hope and forgiveness. And we are so thankful for it because it truly saves us. It saves us from so much in this world. And we are thankful for it. We come, O oh God, this day to praise you. We come to lift your name on high. We come loving God with concerns in our hearts and joys to celebrate. We come first to acknowledge the people who are struggling in this world. Illnesses from COVID-19 or other illnesses that they have. We know that they are struggling, but we know that you bring healing and we are so thankful for it. So we lift these people before you and pray for holy healing in their lives. We pray for those people who feel as though they have brokenness in their lives. We, we pray for healing, we pray for wholeness, that they may bring the pieces back together or make something new out of their brokenness. We pray that they know that there is help and strength found in you and your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh gracious God, for uh, 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 our nation as we begin uh, with a new administration in the White House. We pray that the leaders of our country will look to you for wisdom and guidance in everything that they do and the decisions that they make and that we, O oh gracious God, will uh, be the citizens that we are called to be and to reach out and to help one another in the name of of Christ in everything that we do. We also pray, loving God, that you help us to be different as Christ followers and not just love the lovable, but to love those who aren't so lovable, to love our enemies. Give us that extra strength and courage that it takes to do just that. God of mercy, God of grace, these are the prayers we lift to you. Hear our prayers and have mercy upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We see, uh, I gotta do my advertisement for today. Uh, the Ten Commandments are an essential part to uh, the Christian faith, they're found in Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, and they are the basis of, of so much uh, that we do in our world. Uh, sometimes, honestly, they get misused or misunderstood. Um, and so I, I invite you for the season of Lent to, uh, look, I'm covering my face there. I'll invite you for the season of Lent to join with me not only on Sunday mornings, but uh, during the week, there will be an online Zoom study uh, on this book, Words of Life, Jesus and the Promise of the Ten Commandments Today. It's an Adam Hamilton book. I haven't done one of his studies in a while, but this one really got my attention uh, because we, uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, people say, well, they, we should be hanging them in the courtroom in stone. But well, Jesus actually said, or uh, what actually was said, not Jesus said, but it was told to Moses that they be written on our hearts. 
Uh, and that's what it's all about. So I uh, invite you or challenge you, if you will, for your Lenten uh, practice to be a part of this study. Even if you don't think you want to do it on Zoom or whatever, I'm going to make references to it during this time, during the season of Lent as well and have little mini discussions about it, but there's a lot to unpack about the Ten Commandments. And what I do on Sunday mornings, I won't be able to get into the depth that I will, that gives us with the study. We're already doing Ten Commandments in six weeks. So we're, we're really compressing, but we need to have an understanding. So here's the book, Words of Life. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it from Cokesbury or wherever you purchase your books and it is readily available. I appreciate you sharing this time. I uh, encourage you to share it with others. If you're watching later, let me know that, you, that you're watching. Write it in the comment section there and add your prayer concern if you would like. I pray God's peace be upon you and that we all have the courage to be different and to love our enemies. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.